I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was a... Greatest night in the history of television. Okay. I wasn't going to talk about this. I'm not a T channel. I talk about ghost stories and haunted locations and spooky things on the internet for fun. But what happened at the Academy Awards was scary, but real. And with all of the amount of People coming out with their opinions on what happened that night and some beautifully written, beautifully spoken expressions of what this means. I felt like I should say something too. As somebody who was watching live when the Academy Awards happened, my first instinct was what I bet a lot of people's was. Well, that was staged. My initial reaction was, well, he didn't even connect with his face. Because Chris Rock took that slap like a champ. He did not see it coming. And that might have been why he was able to maintain his composure. He was relaxed. He wasn't braced for it. But he handled it like a champ. And he kept the show going. My reactions initially being that it was faked and then having the Academy cut sound and watching the reactions of everyone in the room, that realization of, no, that just happened. The after effects and seeing so many people talking about it in the days that have followed now my assumption is as follows, and it is all that it is, which is my opinion. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith have had a hard go in their marriage. Tensions are high in marriages just because of day-to-day -day things, finances, getting food on the table, work stress. But when you go to YouTube on your channel that millions of people view, and you expressed to your husband that you've been cheating on him with someone who's nearer in age to their son, that can feel emasculating. I have no doubt that Will Smith absolutely, 100% loves his wife dearly. And with everything going on between them just in their open marriage and entanglements, we know that there have been some struggles there, but that they have remained a strong unit, not just in Hollywood, but in their marriage as it is. But there have been struggles. The infidelities and the alopecia. I can't even imagine how heartbreaking that must be for her. As women who identify as women and who want to be viewed as women, we want to be viewed as beautiful. And a part of that, we relate to how we do our hair. Not just the clothes that we're wearing and the jewelry and makeup. Our hair plays a role. And Jada has always had beautiful hair. Not that she's not a striking bald woman, because I honestly didn't know about the alopecia I don't watch Red Table Talk. I had no idea. I thought she made a style choice because she looks absolutely stunning bald. Her features are so striking and 
beautiful. And I thought she did that intentionally. So when Chris Rock said his joke, I laughed. I thought it was funny too. Because if you look at what the movie is, it was a strong, brave, independent woman making choices for herself, which to me seemed fitting. And now in the aftermath and everything that I have learned, I absolutely feel for Jada and how that hit must have hurt in the moment. And you can see it on her face in that brief moment where we do see her face before it hits the fan. She was not having that joke. But something happened in the 30 seconds after we cut from joke said Husband laughing, Jada rolling eyes back to Chris, before we cut to Will Smith walking on that stage, something transpired between the two of them. Will looked at his wife and said, oh shit, she ain't happy. And there are one of three possible things that he could do. He could do what he did, get on stage and do what he did. He could lean over to his wife, embrace her, tell her, I know that that joke hurts, that's distasteful, let's laugh it off and be professional, I will have words with him later. And you go backstage and you have words with him later. Or they could have done nothing. Options one and three, not great choices. Three takes a lot of patience and understanding. And when you're in something that emotional, you're not going to think to do nothing. I absolutely agree that Will should have done something because the world needs to understand that right now it's too soon to make these kind of jokes about Jada. And we respectively should agree with that. If it's that painful for her, find something else to joke about because they did laugh earlier in the evening, both of them, about the open marriage joke that was made. So if you really want to poke fun at the Smiths, because let's face it, they were going to be a target that night because he was going to be awarded Best Actor, and we all knew it. Everyone knew going into that award ceremony that he was on lock for that award. So of course there were going to be jokes aimed at them, as there were jokes aimed at other people in the room. Hell, at one point, Amy Schumer is actually hitting on Kristen Dunst's husband and joking that Kristen Dunst is a seat filler. Everybody gets joked about, and the Academy Awards have been a minor form of a celebrity roast at this point. These jokes happen. Ask Ricky Gervais. Jim Carrey said it best. I was sickened. I was sickened by the standing ovation. I felt like Hollywood is just spineless. If you want to yell from the audience and disapprove or sh show a disapproval or say something on Twitter or whatever, you, you know, you do not have the right to, to walk up on stage and smack somebody in the face because they said words. It cast a, a pall over everybody's shining moment last night. You know, a lot of people worked really hard to get to that place and to have their moment in the sun and to, to get their award for the really hard work they did. And, a, and, a, and it, it is no mean feat to go through all the stuff you have to go through when you're nominated for an Oscar. It's a gauntlet of devotion that you have to do. And, uh, and you know, just it was just a selfish moment that cast a pall over the whole thing. You never react to what someone says to you with violence before you attempt resolution with words yourself. Another really great example of how this could have gone down came in the aftermath as well. I'm just going to let him tell you because, God, this is brilliant. Now, if Jada, if I was Will Smith, if I, and we all are different, I'm just saying the way I would have handled this is uh, when he told the joke, I would have got out of my seat, but I would have went to my left or to my right to get backstage. 
find out, okay, when the when the talent come off stage, do they come off stage to this side or this side? Uh, well, okay, they come out to this side right here. Okay, I would have patiently waited for Chris Rock to come off stage. And when Chris Rock came off stage, I would have been like, uh, hey, can I talk to you for a second? I would have took Chris Rock in a small room and I would have asked him, I would have been like, so what's up? What's up with that? What you just said about my wife? And I would have at least, because what happened is, what happened is that would have given Chris Rock the opportunity to make the correction, right? That would have given Chris Rock the opportunity to say, hey man, I didn't mean any harm or, you know, hey, fuck you. I said what I said. Okay, if he would have went backstage and said, fuck you, I said what I said, then slap the shit out of him if that's what you was going to do. But did you give him an opportunity to correct? Did you give him an opportunity to apologize? Or you could have sat in your seat and said, keep your, keep my wife name out your fucking mouth. And that would have been that. You don't put your fucking hands on people, period. Point blank. Period. We don't get to react violently to jokes. If Will Smith had sat in that seat and screamed at the top of his lungs, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth twice without getting out of his seat, we'd still be having these conversations today about what is and is not appropriate, but it wouldn't become criminal. And unfortunately, regardless of how light people feel the slap was, or whether or not he was justified, in the eyes of the law, what he did was physical assault. And he did it on camera, live, in front of not just Hollywood, not just the United States, the entire world is talking about this and deciding what repercussions should exist for Will Smith. Because he, as he says, reacted emotionally. No, he was feeling emotional. He reacted physically to a joke that his original reaction to was to chuckle himself. Laugh it off. Even if he didn't feel the joke and felt it was inappropriate, he was going to laugh that joke off. And then he saw his wife. And here was an opportunity to be the man for her again. I will defend you, Jada. I do love you. I see that this hurt you. And with everything that they have been going through, it was a fire ready to explode. And it did. He had not been handling the issues going on between them well, clearly, because he reacted physically viscerally in that moment to the pain on his wife's face. And I can relate. If anybody said a word to my kid, I would go after them with a vengeance. But the difference is I would cut those assholes down with my words and make them regret anything they ever did to my child. I wouldn't once have to raise my hands. And one thing that I really thought needed to be shared and needed to be made more public that an absolutely amazing representation of the African-American community, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, had to say about this. And I apologize, it's long, but every beat of this, every word of it is brilliant and everyone needs to hear this. So in the words of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, when Will Smith stormed onto the Oscar stage to strike Chris Rock, for making a joke about his wife's short hair, he did a lot more damage than just to Rock's face. With a single petulant blow, he advocated violence, diminished women, insulted the entertainment industry, and perpetuated stereotypes about the black community. That's a lot to unpack. Let's start with the facts. Rock made a reference to Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, as looking like Demi Moore in G.I. Jane, in which Moore had shaved her head. Jada Pinkett Smith suffers from alopecia, which causes hair loss. Okay, 
I can see where the Smiths might not have found that joke funny. But Hollywood award shows are traditionally a venue where much worse things have been said about celebrities as a means of downplaying the fact that it's basically a gathering of multimillionaires giving each other awards to boost business so they can make even more money. The Smiths could have reacted by politely laughing along with the joke or by glowering angrily at Rock. Instead, Smith felt the need to get up in front of his industry peers and millions of people around the world, hit another man, then return to his seat to bellow, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. Twice. Some have romanticized Smith's actions as that of a loving husband defending his wife. Comedian Tiffany Haddish, who starred in the movie Girls Trip with Pinkett Smith, praised Smith's actions. For me, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, because it made me believe that there are still men out there that love and care about their women, their wives. Actually, it was the opposite. Smith's slap was also a slap to women. If Rock had physically attacked Pinkett Smith, Smith's intervention would have been welcome. Or if he'd remained in his seat and yelled his post-slap threat, that would have been unnecessary, but understandable. But by hitting Rock, he announced that his wife was incapable of defending herself against words. From everything I'd seen of Pinkett Smith over the years, she's a very capable, tough, smart woman who can single-handedly take on a lame joke at the Academy Awards show. This patronizing, paternal attitude infantilizes women and reduces them to helpless damsels needing a big, strong man to defend their honor, lest they swoon from the vapors. If he was really doing it for his wife and not his own need to prove himself, he might have thought about the negative attention this brought on them much harsher than the benign joke. That would have been truly defending and respecting her. This women need men to defend them is the same justification currently being proclaimed by conservatives passing laws to restrict abortion and the LGBTQ plus community. Worse than the slap was Smith's tearful, self-serving acceptance speech in which he rambled on about all the women in the movie King Richard that he's protected. Those who protect don't brag about it in front of 15 million people. They just do it and shut up. You don't do it as a movie promotion, claiming how you're just like the character you just won an award portraying. But of course, the speech was about justifying his violence. Apparently, so many people need Smith's protection that occasionally it gets too much and someone needs to be smacked. What is the legacy of Smith's violence? He brought back the toxic bro ideal of embracing Cobra Kai teachings of might makes right and talk is for losers. Let's not forget that this macho John Wayne philosophy was expressed in two movies in which Wayne spanked grown women to teach them a lesson. Young boys, especially black boys, watching their movie idol not just hit another man over a joke, but then justify it as him being a superhero-like protector, are now much more prone to follow in his childish footsteps. Perhaps the saddest confirmation of this is the tweet from Smith's child, Jaden. And that's how we do it. The black community also takes a direct hit from Smith. One of the main talking points from those supporting the systemic racism in America is characterizing blacks as more prone to violence and less able to control their emotions. Smith just gave comfort to the enemy by providing them with the perfect optics they were dreaming of. Many will be reinvigorated to continue their campaign to marginalize African Americans and others through voter suppression campaign. As for the damage to show business, Smith's violence is an implied threat to all comedians who now have to worry that an edgy or insulting joke might be met with violence. Good thing Don Rickles, Bill Burr, or Ricky Gervais weren't there. As comedian Kathy Griffin tweeted, Now we all have to worry about who wants to be the next Will Smith in comedy clubs and theaters. The one bright note is that Chris Rock, clearly stunned, managed to handle the moment with grace and maturity. If only Smith's acceptance speech had shown similar grace and maturity and included, instead of self-aggrandizing excuses, a heartfelt apology to Rock. I don't think there's much else that can be said to sum up what happened in the situation. Yes, 
the joke can be deemed as inappropriate. The assumption is you sit in that seat, they're going to roast you, especially if you're up for one of its most prestigious awards. What Will Smith said in that acceptance speech, removed from the instance, was beautiful. Defending others, being a beacon of love and hope, being called upon to defend others. Do it with your beautiful words, Will Smith. You are a wordsmith. Although the world has not seen music from you in a while, your start was in rap. You know how to put words together. And while your apology was beautifully written, it's marred by the fact that you are still making excuses. And I say to Azzy every time he comes at me with something that I think is inappropriate, and he comes at me with an excuse, intention and perception are two very different things. And you have to be able to balance in both at the same time. When you do something wrong, there's a reason, there's an explanation. And you are allowed to express that, but you are not allowed to provide excuses. You cannot marginalize and take down how somebody interprets your actions because their interpretation is very real to them. And there is a good chunk of the population who are concerned with the anger that you expressed. If you're going to offer up an apology, then apologize and shut up. We understand why you felt the need to react, but your reaction far exceeded what it needed to be. You apologize for how your actions were perceived by others, and you stop. You go to Chris Rock and you say, I apologize that I reacted with violence. I apologize that this got out of hand. In the future, please don't make jokes about my wife's hair loss. The back half of that could have been done before the violence was ensued at all. There were ways to prevent this, and I understand that he was a damn about to blow. There is a lot going on in that family's life, and that's understandable. And while initially you choose this profession, when you get to the level that these two are, it's no longer a choice, it's life. And we as outsiders who are not in the industry need to be able to remember they are human. And he reacted in a very human way. When you are a celebrity, I assume you're kind of an island onto yourself and that it isn't as easy to have someone to go to with these little things like, oh, my wife's cheating on me and I feel like less of a man. But at the end of the day, No matter what Chris Rock did, he's a comedian. He told a joke and you slapped him. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. You do not get to raise your hands to anyone for any reason and feel that it's okay. And you said yourself, jokes come with the territory. And that is not something that can be different from person to person. Jokes come with the territory. But we all have our breaking points. And we found Will Smith's, his wife. And while that is a beautiful sentiment, and I can appreciate that want to protect your wife. Protect your wife with your words, Will. There's been some debate now as to what the repercussions should be. Well, here's my take. Will Smith is a brilliant actor and he has proven that. He has grown 
and matured pretty much in the front of America's eyes, from a young man in Philly to an Academy Award-winning actor. And the trajectory of his career now is up to him. Does it die? Does it continue to grow? I absolutely believe that he should be removed from the Academy. Maybe not permanently, but there should be a suspension of his participation as a member of the Academy. There should be a fine. He should be sanctioned by the FCC, and he should pay a fine to the Academy Awards. As far as Will's Academy Award, I say let him keep it. He has worked incredibly hard for that award. He earned it before the events of that evening. And this was a mistake, and a very big mistake. But I don't think it is indicative of the man that he is, or wants to be, or will be in the future. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. If this happens again, then he'll prove who he really is and we can remove it at that time. But from what I've seen and what I know, this was a man on the edge before that night started. There's tension in his life and he broke. And while it's not excusable to ever hit someone, this man is hurting. There is no greater damage that can be done to his career than what he's already done to himself. Everyone is worthy of a second chance if they prove themselves worthy of it. You apologize. You make steps to correct the things you've done wrong in your life. You move on. It's up to everyone else to accept the apology, and some will, and some won't. But you continue to live your life being the best person that you can be, and hope that maybe one day they'll come around. But if they don't, if you are continuing to be the best version of yourself that you can be, then you haven't really lost. You only truly lose when you lose sight of yourself. And you refuse to live your life as anything but the best version of you that you can be. So for me, to all of you, live your lives proudly, happily, seeking out the things that bring you joy. Because at the end of the day, your life is yours and yours alone. Make good choices. Be good people. Live brave lives. The rest will come, even if we falter, even if we fail. My high school principal said it best. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. You fall down 10 times, you got to get up 11. Keep getting up. Keep fighting, no matter your size. But fight with your words, with your ability to prove that you are worthy, you are valid, because we all are, if we are brave enough to demand it in appropriate ways. We're not perfect. Admit to your faults, and then your faults will be your triumphs. I'd really love to hear you guys' thoughts on the subject, and As you know, that's what the comment section is for. So please let me know down below, what do you think? Should Will Smith lose his Oscar? How at fault is Chris Rock in this? How at fault in this is Jada Pinkett Smith? So comment below your thoughts and let me know if you want to hear more of Mom Rants. Um, There is a playlist for it because every once in a while I just need to get on my soapbox. Um, So if you guys want to hear more rant videos from me, let me know some topics you think that I should cover or if I should just stick to the spooky. But I thank you as always for listening to me ramble on and I apologize for the unedited and raw mix of what this is, but I just felt like I should say something. So comment below your thoughts. Let me know if there's other topics we should cover. And until next time, please take care of yourselves and keep your hands to yourselves. Night, everybody.